Guys, today's video, we're going to be talking about raising money and why this is easily able to be done by young people as well as older individuals in the business. One of the biggest limiting beliefs I see is from younger people hopping in the business saying, Connor, why would somebody lend me money? I'm 21 years old. I've never done a deal. No one's going to lend me money. That's wrong. And I'm going to show you why. So in today's video, guys, I'm going to break down why it does not matter what age you are or what your experience is in the business because lenders are not lending on you. They're not lending on you. They're lending on the asset at a leveraged position. They're getting a promissory note deed of trust. This is important to understand because they're protected by the equity in the asset, right? So here's how it works. Let's say this is you and you came across this house right here. Now you have the opportunity to buy this house for 40 grand. Let's say you got it off a of bandit sign or Craigslist or however, however you came across the ad, you have it under contract 40 grand. There's repair costs of 30 grand to fix it up, but it will be worth a hundred thousand dollars or after repair value, ARV value will be a hundred thousand dollars. Once you buy it for 40 and put $30,000 in repairs into it, it's going to force the appreciation up and that's what it'll appraise for. Okay. So this is you, you're a 21 year old. You don't have the money to buy the house. No bank will work with you, so what do you do? You're gonna to have to find a private investor. Here's how this works. Most people that are 21 will not go talk to this individual who's a 65 year old millionaire because you have a limiting belief that says, why would he lend me money to buy this house? He's not gonna lend it to you, he's gonna lend it on the asset. So if you're only borrowing $70,000, what's the worst thing that happens, right? And you put 30,000 repairs. So at least if, you borrow all this money, which the lender's probably not gonna give you all your repair money up front, and you borrow 40 plus 30, and you take that $30,000 and you lose it or disappear or you know, vanish off the planet, whatever happens, they're still taking the house back and still have room in it to put those repairs in and sell it and get their money out. So they're lending on a leveraged position on the asset. They're at, uh, asset-based lenders, not FICO-based lenders. They're not looking at you. They're looking at the piece of property, and if you have it bought at the, if you've acquired the property at the right price, and there's enough spread in it, they're not gonna be looking at you. So this is a limiting belief that's holding you back, guys. If you find a good enough deal, the money will show up. Now, where do we find it? This is where I want you to focus going forward. If you're a young investor out there, or really any investor trying to raise money, I want you to focus on IRA custodians. Now, people have their money tied up into an IRA. Guys, I'm not an attorney, I'm just giving you advice here. That, that is, this is a good place to raise money, right? So, IRA custodians do what? right? They work with IRAs. People that use that custodian to hold their IRAs can self-direct that money. So what if you have $100,000 sitting in your IRA? Can you touch that money? Not likely, right? Not until you're 59 and a half, depending on what type of IRA you have, unless you have some type of weird stretch or inherited IRA, which we won't get into. But here's what you got to understand. If you have $100,000 in a bank account versus $100,000 in an IRA, and someone comes to you and asks you to borrow that money, over here, this money in your bank account can be spent on vacations, food, clothes, anything and everything. Over here, this cannot be touched until you're 59 and a half. So, also, if you teach them how to self-direct or they figure out how to self-direct their IRA while working with you lending on real estate, when that money comes back in the account, it comes back in tax-free. That's why people self-direct their IRA is to earn money tax-free. There's lots of different ways to structure these types of deals. So if they're making 10% on their money in an IRA versus 10% of money Outside their IRA, who's really making a higher return? If they're not paying taxes on it, doesn't their interest rate or their yield on their investment come back at a higher uh, rate than it would over here if they're just getting 10% but they're paying taxes on it? So this is why people are more likely to lend you out money for a longer period of time at a better rate because they're not paying taxes on it and they can't touch it for a long time. Over here, they have to pay taxes on it and they, and they basically have too many other options with that money. They get too many other... Uh, things pulling their attention. Oh, I want a new car, or I want to upgrade this. I want to do a bathroom renovation in our house. So that's why you want to focus on IRA custodians, guys. Quest IRA sponsors our podcast. Quest is a great company. You should check them out. But this is it. Don't think that people will not lend you money. They're lending money to you on a house where they're leveraged in a position where if you don't do what you say you're going to do, they can foreclose on you, take the house back, still have room in it to put the money back in the house, get it fixed up, sell it, and get their capital out. So that's why you shouldn't be worried about how old you are or, or kind of what background you come from, guys. They're lending on the house, not you. I hope that helps some, for some of you young guys that ask that question. Guys, if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one. Have a good day.